Hello everybody and welcome to a beautiful Kilo, I'm not Kilo anything, who am I kidding, this is my yard. So um, I had a bunch of stuff I had to do today, I was going to do an activation, it was a beautiful day, but I had a lot of other stuff that needed to get done. Um, so I figured when I was done doing all the house chores and whatnot, uh, I'd shoot a quick video on some non-ham radio related stuff, still radio related, but uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the different radio services and why I choose to use certain radio services in the outdoors. Um, so let me get things set up and I'll be back in just a minute and we'll get talking. Okay, so we're back. Um, so let me talk a little bit about some of the radios I've got in front of me, a little bit about some of the different radio services that there are and why I've chosen what I've chosen. Uh, so in front of me, I've got radios from a couple different services here. So uh, over here, I've got ham radios. So, um, you know, I've got a uh, Yaesu FT5DR, a Yaesu FT65, and the ubiquitous uh, Belfang UV5R. Now, ham radio is great, but it does have some limitations. One of the big problems I have with ham radio, especially when it pertains to talking to people that I actually know, is that most of the people I know aren't licensed hams. In fact, hardly any are. Um, you know, if I want to talk to my wife or my daughter or something like that, they can't use a ham radio. So I'm a, I've said in other videos, I'm a pretty avid outdoorsman. I spend a lot of time outside hiking, camping, kayaking, mountain biking, you name it. And I'm out with my family a lot doing those things, and I want to be able to communicate. And quite often we're in places where there's no cell service. Um, so that's where these radios come in. So these are GMRS radios. Uh, so if you're not familiar with GMRS, GMRS is the General Mobile Radio Service. Um, it's one of several different radio services that are available to you um, that aren't ham radio. And I'm going to talk a little bit, a bit about why I've chosen to go down the GMRS route. So like I said, um, part of this is... I want to be able to contact people that I know. Ham radio is great for contacting random people. Um, GMRS is better for talking to people that you actually know and you actually need to talk to. Um, there are a couple channels that do a really good job of talking about this. One is uh, Not a Rubicon's channel. Um, Randy does a fantastic job of explaining uh, why he chooses GMRS, why GMRS is a great thing for his use, which is um, four-wheeling, off-roading, things like that, leading off-road groups. Um, the other one is the Tech Prepper. He does a good job of explaining why, how to do um, targeted contacts. Now, he doesn't use GMRS, but he's ta he's gonna, he talks about some of the other services I'm going to talk about. Um, so let me talk a little bit about GMRS and why I chose it and some of the benefits and some of the drawbacks. Then I'll talk about the other services as well. Um, so GMRS, like I said, is the General, Mo General Mobile Radio Service. Um, GMRS is a licensed service from the FCC. Um, the reason I chose this particular service is, so a GMRS radio, um, the GMRS radio has a lot of benefits of ham radio without the test. Um, so it's 35 bucks for 10 years, much like a ham license is now. Um, the difference is there's no test. You just go to the FCC's website, pay the 35 bucks and you're good to go. The other cool thing about GMRS is your license covers your entire family. So it covers you your wife, your kids, your brother, your sister, your in-laws, your parents. It covers just about anybody you can think of. So if I'm out hiking with my wife and my daughter, I can give each of them a GMRS radio. We can stay in contact. Um, in the summer, I go up to Letchworth State Park almost every summer with my family, and we I give everybody GMRS radios, and that way we can communicate. Um, the, the big benefit to GMRS, aside from the licensing, um, are, are the radios themselves. So. The radios, I'm going to back up just a little bit because there's quite a bit of sun in my face. Um, the radios themselves have some benefits. So GMRS can run up to 50 watts. You can run a 50 watt mobile rig. Um, the handhelds are five watts. On um, the handhelds, uh, like I said, five watts, front panel programmable, removable antennas, which is big because um, the other well, one of the other services I'm going to talk about, you can't have removable antennas. Um, and the stock antennas, the stock rubber, stock rubber ducts on most of these things are hot garbage. Um, so putting a good antenna on the HT makes a big difference as far as uh, range is concerned. Uh, let's talk for a second about range. So how, what kind of range can you get with these things? Well, that kind of depends. Uh, it's line of sight communication. These things run UHF. So we're talking 462 to 467 megahertz. 
Um, around here, there's a lot of foliage, a lot of hills. Depending on where you are, your range might be anywhere from one to five miles. So for instance, my mom lives about five miles from here, but she lives on top of a hill and it's pretty much straight line of sight to here. So I can talk back and forth between my house and her house with a GMRS radio, a five watt GMRS radio. Um, if you're someplace where there's lots of hills like here and you're not hill to hill, like I said, you might be talking a mile or two. It kind of depends. 50 watt mobile rig, obviously it'll get you out a lot further. The other big benefit to GMRS though, is you can use repeaters. Um, so much like ham radio, so on two meter or 70 centimeter, which I've got here, um, we can use repeaters to extend our range. I can do the same thing on GMRS. So for instance, I said we go camping at Letchworth State Park pretty much every summer. We didn't this summer. I, unfortunately, I had to go to Spain, shucks. But um, when we're up there, the cell service is spotty at best, but there are GMRS repeaters. So I can give my everybody in my family a GMRS radio and we can talk all over the park, no problem. So that's another huge advantage to GMRS. Now, um, as far as the radios here are concerned, I've got, I've got several different radios for motion. Um, the one here in the front is the one I carry most of the time. So this is a KGS-88G. Uh, it's a super heterodyne receiver. Um, it's IP67, USB charging. Um, this is a great little radio. Now this one only receives UHF. So this is pretty much a dedicated GMRS radio. You can't listen to weather radio. You can't listen to VHF on this thing. It's strictly um, UHF. It will only transmit on the 22 GMRS channels and the and the eight repeater channels, uh, but it will receive anywhere in the UHF band. Um, this is the radio I carry most of the time when I'm out camping, hiking, and things like that with my family. Uh, the radio behind it is another motion. I think this is a KGUV9G. Um, again, super heterodyne. Um, this is sort of my base station radio. So this is the one I leave back at camp for people to listen on. This thing's got a really good receiver. The audio is not fantastic. It's okay. But the receiver in this thing's quite good. So I leave this back at the base camp because you can quite often hear people on this that you can't hear them with other, on other radios. Um, the next radio back here, um, we've got a, uh, this is a Belfang uh, GMRS 15 Pro. Um, these things are dirt cheap. I think this is like 25 bucks, something like that. That's a nice little radio. The thing I like about this radio is, so this radio and this radio as well, this other motion will do, um, they'll, they'll listen to all the GMRS channels. They'll also listen to, this one will listen to all the UHF and VHF channels. So I can hear uh, two meter and 70 centimeter ham. I can hear all the emergency services frequencies on this. This will be, get no weather radio, all of those kind of things. This one won't. All right, this one will, this one will. The other cool thing about this is it's USB-C charging, but it's USB-C charging on the battery. So the other radio, that motion in the front, the charging port for the USB is um, on the radio itself. So if you wanna charge the battery by a USB, you can't swap batteries and have a battery charging while you're using another battery. On this Balfang, you can. Um, so that's a benefit. Um, it's not as good a radio, but for the price, it's a pretty nice radio. Um, this one right here, this is a, a BTEC GMRS V2. Uh, BTEC is a US based company that takes Balfang radios and does their own stuff to them. This is essentially, a, a starts out life as a Balfang radio. Again, GMRS only. Um, but again, this will, this will uh, receive two meter and 77, 70 centimeter ham, all your emergency bands, uh, NOAA weather radio, all that stuff, this will work as well. This is actually a pretty nice radio. These are about 70 bucks. Um, the nice thing about these is these have US support, so if you have issues, BTEC is located in the United States. So that's something to consider. Uh, the last of the GMRS radios I've got here on the table is a Baofang as well. This one is a UV9G. Um, this one's IP67 rated. This is a pretty tough little radio. Again, it'll do little receive on two meter, 70 centimeter, all that stuff. These are reasonably priced too. I forget what this thing is, like 30, 35 bucks, I think, something like that. Don't quote me on that. But it's a pretty decent radio to knock around. These are pretty tough. Um, you know, as far as the ham radios I've got here, like I said, I can't just hand one of those to my daughter when we're out hiking and have her use it. She could listen, but she can't transmit according to the regulations because she's not a a licensed ham, I can give her one of these GMRS radios and she's good to go. Now, let me talk quickly about the other two services besides ham radio and, and GMRS that you might consider. Uh, the first one is FRS or the family radio service. I think pretty much everybody's familiar with FRS. FRS is your little bubble pack radios you might buy at a sporting goods store or Walmart or Target. Um, now, the thing about FRS is they're limited to, I think it's five watts on certain channels and half a watt on the other channels. The GMRS radios are also, the handhelds are, five watts on certain channels, um, half a watt on other channels. 
Um, I think that's what it is. Um, but FRS is straight across the board. That's what it is. No repeaters. Um, no 50 watt radios, no removable antennas. Most of those FRS radios are pretty cheap. Now, the nice thing is, if you've got a big group and you've got a GMRS license and people are talking on GMRS radios, if somebody rolls up with an FRS radio or you've got a bunch of cheap FRS radios to hand out, they'll talk on the same channels the GMRS radios will, right? So they're interoperable. You can talk to an FRS radio with a GMRS radio and vice versa. Uh, that can also be a downside because you'll get all sorts of chatter because they're pretty common, right? That's sort of a, a, a common radio for people to have out in the woods or out ca at campgrounds or whatever. So you're going to pick up a lot of chatter. Now, that can be that can be mitigated by using privacy tones. They're not really private, but, um, you know, uh, CTCSS or DCS tones um, so that your radio is not picking up everybody else's chatter. It doesn't make your conversation private. It just means you won't get inundated by other people's conversations. Um, the last service is MERS. I think that stands for multi-use radio service, I think. MERS is weird. So MERS is five channels, um, maximum of two watts, no repeaters, but it does have removable, removable antennas. Now, the cool thing about MERS is it's VHF. So GMRS and FRS are UHF. Um, MERS is VHF. VHF tends to work better in wooded areas and things like that. Um, and the other cool thing about MERS is nobody uses it. So you basically are going to have your own private channels. The only people that I can think of that use MERS are Walmart. If you roll up to a Walmart with a MERS radio, you're going to listen to them talking. Uh, but if you're out in the woods, the chances of somebody else talking on your MERS channel is slim to none. Um, but again, no repeaters, maximum of two watts. There's also CB, but I'm not even going to bring that into the equation because that's that's a whole different ball of wax. Now, um, you know, when it comes to like the ham radios, I mean, you know, this thing's got built-in APRS. APRS is awesome. If you're not familiar with APRS, it's the Automated Packet Reporting System. I can send GPS location and messages and all sorts of stuff with APRS. Um, I've also got a MobiLink TNC here. Um, this can, I use this in conjunction with that FT65. Um, same thing for APRS. Um, but again, you need a ham license for that, right? So um, unless you're a ham, that stuff is kind of off limits. So for me, for what I do, when I'm out in the woods, camping, hiking, kayaking, mountain biking, you name it, and I'm with my family, I'm bringing a, a GMRS radio with me. I'll probably have a, a ham radio with me as well, um, but I'm, I'm primarily going to use the, the GMRS rigs. Uh, with that being said, the last thing I've got on the table here is a Garmin InReach Mini 2. Um, if you're serious about emergency communications when you're out in the woods, um, buy one of these and call it a day. So these things are not going to save your life. The chances of a GMRS radio saving your life are slim to none. Uh, the chances of getting somebody on ham radio in an emergency, oh, they're hit or miss, man. If somebody's listening to that repeater and you're lucky, okay. An HF radio, you might be able to get a hold of somebody, uh, you know, across the country and have them call emergency services. But this thing, I get into trouble, you flip the SOS thing open, hit the button, it works from satellite, and you've got emergency services on the way. Um, these are expensive. There's a fairly expensive plan that goes along with it, right? These don't just work. You've got to pay for a subscription. But here's the thing. How much is your life worth, right? This thing's like, what, three, four hundred bucks, something like that, I think. And then the subscription's like 35 bucks a month. Um, I, actually, there's cheaper ones. There's like 20 bucks a month, I think. But again, how much is your life worth, okay? Um, so like I said, I just wanted to talk briefly about some of the different radio services you might use in the outdoors. I apologize for the sun here. It's getting late. Um, and the sun is kind of in my face, so if I look weird, well, I look weird anyway, but if I look especially weird, the sun's right there. Um, but like I said, I kind of just wanted to talk about some of the different uh, the different radio services that you might encounter, why you might use one over the other. Like I said, for me, for my family, when I'm out in the woods doing non-ham radio stuff, GMRS is the way to go. Um, you know, like I said, Randy, not a Rubicon, he says ham radio is the hobby, GMRS is the radio service you use to support your other hobbies. And I 100% agree with him. He's 100% right. There are a lot of people out there that don't like Randy. Um, I personally think he's hilarious. I love his channel. I love his content. He's right about a lot of things. Um, I tend to hope that I'm a happy ham and not a sad ham, right? Um, but like I said, when it comes to radios you can hand somebody else and let them use, if they're in your family, man, GMRS is the way to go. And like I said, the other cool thing is, if somebody isn't in your family, toss them an FRS radio and now it's interoperable. Um, so like I said, I just wanted to talk a little bit about you know, why I've chosen to go the GMRS route um, for my family and for my outdoor recreational type stuff. 
Um, so with that being said, uh, next video, I plan on, I was going to shoot it today, but like I said, I had things around the house that really had to get done. I plan on shooting another field activation. Uh, this time I'm going to use a very small kit. I'll talk about the kit, what I've got in it, why I chose what I chose, um, as I do in most of my videos. Um, and we'll do a feed up field activation with that one. Um, and I look for that one probably. I'm, I'm hoping later this week. We'll see what the weather does. The weather's been kind of iffy. So anyway, um, I hope you learned something. I hope it was informative. Like I said, if you if you want more information about talking to people other than random people, check out Randy's channel at Not a Rubicon on YouTube. He's got really great GMRS stuff. Like I said, he's a little coarse. So if you got kids around, his language can be a little rough. I think he's hilarious. Um, and the tech prepper, if you're looking for um, his No Random Contacts series. Um, you know, if you're looking to contact specific people as opposed to just random people on the on the radio, his channel's a really good to, one to watch as well. So with that being said, uh, I hope you learned something, uh, and I will see you on the next one. And uh, yeah, I'll leave my yard now and go back to doing housework. So everybody have a good one. I'll see you on the next one in 7-3.